Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another, another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Easy for me to say. And today we're going to talk about the three big realtor objections that stop most mortgage professionals in their tracks like a deer in the headlights and how to overcome those. Objections are par for the course. Objections are the nature of the beast. You're always going to have objections. So the goal is not to eradicate or eliminate objections. The goal is to show up powerfully and effective to navigate around them, over them, through them, so you can dismantle them and you can get past them to the outcome that you are reaching out for, which in this particular case, of course, the initial uh, overture, the goal is always to see if indeed you have enough openness in the recipient, enough uh, readiness to explore possibility such that they say yes to an appointment. That's all we're going for. We're not going for you know, marriage on the first date, so to speak. That would be coming on too strong, too hard. We're just trying to see if indeed they're open. That's it. If they're open, then they're going to say yes to an appointment. If they're not, then they're going to slam the door in your face. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you've been rejected. That just means that they're not ready for your gift yet, right? A lot of people, they'll take that objection and they'll have that erode and corrode their mojo, their swagger factor, their self-esteem, their self-worth, because they collapse the event which is the no, or I'm not interested, or F off, whatever it might be. And they collapse that event into a meaning that has them feel disempowered. They feel rejected. They feel inadequate. They feel imposter syndrome. They feel lack, limitation, scarcity, and doubt because they feel like the no speaks to the fact that they're inadequate as a value proposer, uh, inadequate as a mortgage professional, inadequate when it comes to perhaps their skill, their experience, uh, what they have to bring to the table that's unique, that's of unique value to the particular person they're making an overture to. And so that can often cause them to feel a sense of just not wanting to make those calls, right? Call reluctance and not wanting to make those overtures because they feel once bitten, twice shy. Perhaps you can relate. I've certainly be, been there. So if you feel that way or if you felt that well, way, welcome to the club. You're in good company. That being said, though, we want to teach you today and I'm going to give you some fine distinctions today on how to shift the energy. So instead of feeling like you're chasing, begging, bribing, you can show up in power with a posture where instead of leaning in to kiss the girl while she's leaning away, which is never a good feeling, right? That feeling of, you know, chasing that feeling of groveling for business. That's never a great energy to feel like you're having to lose your dignity or begging, chasing, bribing, or kissing butts just to get a, to get a yes to a meeting or just to try and create some kind of a relationship. So you can generate some revenue. That's never a good feeling because that desperation comes off like commission breath halitosis. Have you noticed? It's like instant repulsion. You're going to repel people and you're going to repel yourself, frankly, where you're going to just feel this sense that you're giving your dignity away if you don't have the right posture. If you're not showing up in peace, power, and poise, and if you start to lean in too much, then you get in a place where you feel very prone to and vulnerable to a feeling of rejection, a feeling like you're getting the door slammed in your nose. That's never a good place to be. So I'm going to share some distinctions that perhaps you've never heard before, or maybe you've heard them before, but you need reminding more than you need educating. So maybe the repetition is going to have it really lodge in. So you start to apply it to your prospecting efforts so you can get more results, better, faster, easier than ever before. That's my goal for you today. So let's dive in, shall we? First, let's talk about a preliminary topic that I think is mission critical for us to discuss. And that is why realtors give you lame objections. You know, the smoke screens, the lame objections, you've heard them all before. I'm busy. Call me later. I'm not interested. Thanks, but no thanks. I already have a lender. I'm already married to my lender, et cetera, et cetera. Sound familiar? Yeah. Welcome to the club, right? It's almost as if we've heard this before, right? <laughs> so if you're hearing that, it's just smokescreen. It doesn't mean that they're not open to receiving unique value. It doesn't mean that they're not open to having a conversation. It doesn't mean that they're not open to growing their business. Now, that also doesn't mean that they are open either. Frankly, I wouldn't read into it 
too much on one side or the other, because it's kind of like going into a store and the clerk says, can I help you with anything? What do you typically tell them? No, I'm what? I'm just looking, right? That's called a buyer defense mechanism. And it's built in subconsciously. We automatically do it. We don't have to think about it. It's a way to slough off any pressure. It's a way to slough off anyone trying to control or manipulate or take our time or to put undue pressure on us. So we say these things just simply to get out of the discomfort of feeling like we need to give up our time or to have some kind of salesperson pressure us to make a decision. Right. So buyer defense defense mechanisms are a real thing. And everyone has that knee jerk reaction. So don't take it personally. It's like if you're at dinner and you're having some smokies or some hot dogs and you pass the ketchup down the line to whoever's to your left or your right. And you say, would you like some ketchup? And they, and they say, no. Are you going to feel rejected because they say, no, of course not. They're just not wanting ketchup. It's not a big deal. It has nothing to do with you. So you want to make sure you don't collapse it into a disempowering meaning just because someone's not ready for your gift yet, which by the way, notice the meaning, right? Emotion always follows meaning. So when you attach a meaning that you're not enough, you're not good enough, and you're inadequate, and you just got rejected, all of a sudden, what's the feeling you have? Emotion always follows meaning. So when you attach a disempowering meaning to an event, and by the way, no event has any inherent meaning. It has no meaning in and of itself. We give it the meaning. No event is good or bad except the meaning we add to it. So when you add that disempowering meaning, you have a disempowering what? Emotion. And on the flip side, when you attach an empowering meaning, like they're not ready for my gift yet, let's bless and release them. Perhaps they'll come to their senses down the line. They're not ready for my gift yet. Everything always works out for me, right? I attract the right people. And I also, by virtue of the centrifugal force of my energy and my commitment to my dream and my commitment to my standards and not settling on the standards of the dream team that I'm committed to building, I spit those people out through the centrifugal force of my defiant resolve to have it the way I want it and not settle. But everything always works out for me. Everything always works out for me. I know I'm always divinely guided. When you have that kind of meaning, when you have that kind of identity, you start to prove yourself right in the same way that you prove yourself right when you say you're rejected and you're not good enough. Whatever you believe, you prove yourself right. As the late and great Henry Ford once said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. We are all, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, self-fulfilling prophecies. So it's really important that we add a meaning that empowers versus disempowers. Because if you had to choose between one and the other, obviously, why would you settle for anything less than empowered versus disempowered? True? So that's why we get objections. It's a buyer defense mechanism, and it's the nature of the beast. So rather than try to avoid objections entirely, why not learn how to leverage them and how to use them to ascend higher in your business. It's like the Wright brothers, they didn't eradicate gravity in order to have airplanes take flight, did they? They learned how to use the law of gravity and the law of lift, which is a superseding law, by the way. It's a higher law than the law of gravity. And once they discovered the law of lift and how it supersedes the law of gravity, they were able to take flight and do the seemingly impossible. Same thing here. The goal is not to eradicate objections. The goal is to be able to supersede them and to be able to transcend them such that you eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner all day, every day, and turn them into opportunity, turn them into new relationships, turn them into new connections. And truth be told, we are in a relationship business. And so the more meaningful relationships you're able to cultivate, especially with top producing realtors who make you their exclusive, who send you all their business all the time, put you on their speed dial, the more meaningful relationships you make with top producing realtors who have the highest capacity, by the way, to send you the most amount of business most often, the more revenue you're going to have. The more relationships, the more revenue. It's a direct correlation. So 
knowing that that's the case and you're in a relationship business, obviously it only makes sense to become a badass when it comes to cultivating relationships. And the only way to do that is to learn how to overcome those objections. So that's why we're covering this topic today. So let's get into it a little deeper, shall we? Let's talk about five reasons why you get stopped by lame objections. Five big reasons why you get stopped by these lame ass objections that these realtors are throwing out at you and trying to slough you off with. Okay, the first reason is you lack a unique value proposition. You know, offering great rates, great service, it sounds nice, but frankly, that's a minimum expectation just to be in business. That's not enough to be considered unique. That's just same old, same old. You know, other competitors are saying we got great rates and you're saying me too. Other competitors are saying we got great service. You're saying me too. Welcome to joining the clutter, joining the crowd, joining the stampede and doing what everyone else is doing. And guess what? Everyone else is media freaking ochre. Everyone else is mediocre. It's a sea of average. If you want to be average, that's a great way to do it. But if you want to be the top dog, you got to be zigging while everyone else is zagging. So that's why it's mission critical to have a unique, a compelling, unique value proposition that makes you stand out from the clutter. And obviously, it's not great great rates or great service. You, if you have been in the game for more than a day or two, if you've tried that for a, a call or more, you know that to be true. You already have experienced through an empirical evidence the fact that that lands flat when it comes to making overtures to realtors. They are not going to give you the time of day if that's your value proposition. You got to show up to the game with something better than that. And you guys already know that. So that's one reason why you may be getting doors slammed in your face and having a hard time overcoming objections. You just don't have something unique that gives you the power in the proposition. By that, I mean, if you're making a proposition, you needed to be in a place where you're giving the keys to the Ferrari not the firefly, right? If you're going to be offering keys to a vehicle, you don't want to be offering the firefly unless they're, you know, uh, if they're, you know, hitchhiking on the side of the road and their alternative is walking. And I liken that to going after the low producing realtors. If you're going after the low producing realtors, any firefly will do. They don't really give a rat's ass because they're just happy to be talking to somebody, right? So if they don't have any business, if they have no capacity to send you business, if they have hardly any buyers or sellers, any firefly will do. But if you're going after those who already have a vehicle, if you're going after people that already drive in style, if you're going after people who already have momentum and they're not standing on the side of the road with a backpack, you know, burning their ass in the sun. Uh, with their thumb out hitchhiking, they're going to have higher standards with the value proposition you offer. You're going to need to be offering the keys to the Firefly or rather the, the Ferrari, not the Firefly. So that being said, let's cover a few more of the big reasons why you get stopped like a deer in the headlights when it comes to making overtures to top producing realtors, which by the way, are really the only realtors for the most part worthy of having a consistent campaign to attract. You can attract the, you know, the middle mediocre realtors if you want, if you feel like they have uh, the sparkle in their eye, they're pep in the step and a background of winning. Like if someone has been winning in the past, maybe they've won in other businesses, or maybe they won as an athlete. Maybe they were, you know, a division one, super competitive uh, champion level athlete, or they've done something extraordinary in their past and they have the mindset of a winner, then that person's going to ascend because your results will rarely exceed that which you believe you're capable and worthy of. And your results will almost always rise to the level of your identity. And when you have someone who has a winner's identity, they're going to rise to that level in all of their, you know, uh, areas that you're, they're wanting to accomplish. And certainly the real estate business is no exception. So keep that in mind. You don't necessarily just want to attract top producers. You can also keep your eyes open and keep your, you know, top talent sensors dialed in to look for people who are on the rise, those rising stars. They have that rising star mentality. They show up early. They stay late. 
They have the grit. They got the mindset. They got the work ethic. They got the pleasing personality. They've got the in it to win it mentality. Those kinds of people are certainly worthy of connecting with and cultivating relationships with, but those are few and far between. So as a general rule, the best determinant of future performance is past performance. If you see someone who's already been successful in their previous businesses or in their real estate business, chances are that person is going to have capacity to send you a whole lot more business than someone who has not had that past success. So keep that in mind. Let's move on to reason number two, why most loan officers get stopped in the tracks with these objections from realtors. Okay, the second reason is you lack confidence and certainty. You lack confidence and certainty. Now, what is confidence and certainty? It's an energy. It's an energy. When you know that you know that you know that you can deliver on your promise, when you know that you know that you know that you hold the keys to the Ferrari, when you know that you know that you know that you're in the power position, that you hold the cookie, that you're in the driver's seat, that they need you more than you need them, and you've got 50 reasons, even 100 reasons, 50 to 100 references, why you know you're the bomb freaking diggity and the no-brainer of the year for smart, ambitious, growth-minded real estate agents to partner with you, it gives you ironclad certainty. It's like if you only have one reference, one reason why you think a realtor would want to work with you, in particular, a top producing realtor, that's like having a table with one leg. That's going to be a very wobbly table. But if that table has four legs, 10 legs, 14 legs, 40 legs, the more legs on that table, the more rock solid, the more stable, the more certain. And it all starts with your own identity. Back in the day when I was a sprouting newbie entrepreneur salesperson, I had a lot of stinking thinking, a lot of mind trash I had to weed out. I felt inadequate. I felt too, uh, you know, uh, lacking of experience, too young. Uh, I felt like I wasn't charismatic enough. I wasn't articulate enough. I didn't have enough prowess in my proficiency. So I had a lot of holes in my proverbial self-image bucket that was causing me to hemorrhage certainty and confidence. I had to do a lot of soul work, a lot of soul surgery to hem up those holes. I had to fill my cup with all those references. I had to put a lot of legs under the table of my belief system that I'm capable and worthy of success that I do have what it takes, that I do have something of value, that I am made by greatness and for greatness, that God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with me. All these different references. I'm a Christian. So one of the things I really had huge impact in my heart and mind on my journey is allowing God's truth to seep into my soul, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And as I started to align my thoughts with God's thoughts, if I, as I started to align my self-image with how God sees me, it purged all that mind trash that was having me hemorrhage certainty and confidence. But confidence is an energy. Certainty is an energy. If you are wobbly in your knees and you're using words like kind of, sort of, maybe, hope, I hope, I wish, those are wobbly words. So that mindset of certainty and confidence comes from words of certainty and confidence. And likewise, a mindset of lack of confidence, of doubt, of lack, limitation, scarcity, of the wobble, if you will, a wobble mindset and wobble energetic frequency also has wobble words like kind of, sort of, maybe, hope, wish. You want to eradicate those words from your vocabulary. Remove those words entirely. Start using words like certainly, absolutely. And the more you speak and the more you own your champion identity, you roll your shoulders back, you put your freaking cape on, you own your champion self, not out of arrogance, but out of confidence because you know that everyone else is just chasing after realtors, trying to be a lone leech, a mortgage parasite, trying to get instead of give. And in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. It doesn't take much to stand out when you know that you're coming from a pure heart to serve a fellow soul, to make a difference for someone else, to be light and love in the darkness for someone else, to be that difference maker, to be a servant leader, 
when you come from that intention, that pure, genuine intention to serve a fellow soul, a fellow human being out of the plight and the suck of doing it the hard way and into the light of doing it a smarter way, you're going to find that that pure intention makes a massive difference because as one of my mentors once said, you can't be half pregnant. You either are pregnant or you're not. And the same thing with caring. You can't half care. You either care or you don't. The power of that intention to genuinely care with a heart to serve a fellow soul, a fellow human being versus just to come get and to be a lone leech and a mortgage parasite, that's a massive differentiator. Like I said before, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. It doesn't take much to stand out if you have the right intention. So that intention is what undergirds your certainty and confidence. Your self-image undergirds your certainty and confidence. Your mindset work, right? The work you've done on yourself to build your winner's mindset, knowing that winners always find a way to win and really building that identity of all the things you've done in the past where you felt the heat of adversity and you rose above it and you used it to get stronger, sharper, wiser, better, to become the best version of yourself. The more you work on yourself to become the best version of yourself, the more you're going to be able to show up in power. Does it mean you don't have doubt? No, it doesn't. You're always going to be human. You're always going to have some doubts. That's just welcome to being human on the front lines of real life. But the more you can stand in that energy of certainty, unapologetically, unashamedly, and just show up knowing that you're not coming to get, you're coming to give. You're not a go-getter, you're a go-freaking-giver. You're coming to be on purpose, with purpose, to serve a fellow soul, a fellow human being. From that energy, you get out of focusing on self and navel-gazing and being narcissistic and looking at yourself and being self-focused, and you shift on being connected to purpose, to serve someone else, to bless someone else to be a difference maker for someone else. So confidence and certainty is a mindset, but it has to be backed with references on why you're confident, why you're certain. The one-legged stool is not going to cut it. That's going to get you on wobbly knees. So building those references is going to be mission critical. Do you have a big stack of awesome? See, if you're driving in a Ferrari, if you're passing the keys to a Ferrari versus the Firefly, you're going to have certainty on why it's the no-brainer of the year for smart, ambitious, growth-minded realtors to want to roll with you because you're rolling in a freaking Ferrari, right? It's like, why would they want to settle for a Firefly when they can roll with you in a Ferrari, right? It's like the no-brainer. If you had genuine keys to ignite the ignition in a 500 or 600 horsepower Ferrari. And it's mint. I mean, it's just, it is a thing of freaking beauty, right? It is an a- absolute engineering masterpiece. And you get in there and you get goosebumps just getting into that bucket seat because it's that freaking off the chain awesome. Like it's that awesome. You're not going to have any qualms about inviting people to roll with you in your fire, in your, in your Ferrari when you know everyone else is offering a Firefly. True or not true, right? That's going to give you confidence because you have references. You have so many references. The seats are better. The smell is better. The power is better. The design is better. The display is better. You know, all those little different features from how it uh, corners to its, you know, speed from zero to 60 to, you know, the, the sunroof to the display on the dash to all these little features, right? to just the the feeling of being in a Ferrari, right? There's that feeling. All those things give you references for why you have certainty that it's the no-brainer of the year for smart, ambitious, growth-minded realtors to roll with you. You have no wobbly knees in dangling the carrot of rolling with the Ferrari man or woman, right? No qualms about making that overture and dangling the keys of the Ferrari because you have certainty that everyone else is offering at best, maybe a Toyota Corolla, maybe a Cadillac, but it's a far cry from a freaking Ferrari, right? So it's that knowing, it's that certainty that allows you to show up in power unashamedly, unabashedly, rolling your shoulders back with this relaxed confidence. You're not straining, you're not striving, you're not white knuckling, you're not grinding, you just got this relaxed confidence. What would it feel like to be making overtures to realtors with that kind of relaxed confidence? Imagine yourself with that relaxed confidence on your countenance 
and that relaxed, confident smile on your face and your shoulders back and your freaking cape on. And you just, if they say, no, I already have a firefly. I'm good. I'm not interested. Are you going to feel like a slap in your face rejected? Hell no. You're going to be like, you're not ready for my gift yet. Are you, you have no idea what you're passing up and passing over. You have no idea. You're so used to rolling with fireflies. You have no idea what a a Ferrari feels like. You just don't know what you don't know. You're just not ready for my gift yet. So that doesn't have you feel bad. That has has you feel good because S W S W S W some will, some won't. So what next? Someone's waiting, right? You've got this certainty to know there. It's not going to take much to get six to 12 people who are top producers who appreciate and exude gratitude for the difference between a Ferrari and a Firefly. It's not going to take much. It only takes a couple of brain cells to rub together and an ounce of ambition and just a little bit of discernment to notice the difference between a Firefly and a Ferrari and to choose the Ferrari over the Firefly. It's not going to take much, but you have to own that for yourself. If you don't have that certainty yourself, you're not going to be able to transmit it. It's all about a transmission of certainty. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, we are merchants of certainty. That's worth writing down. I am a merchant of certainty. And the more you own it and the more you are sold yourself, the more you're going to be able to pass that certainty on to others. The first and most important sale you can ever make is selling yourself on why you. Why should they work with you? Why is that a no-brainer for a smart, ambitious, growth-minded real estate agent to want to partner with you and send you all their business all the time. If you're not sold on that, I guarantee you no one else will. So that's the second reason why most loan officers get stopped by lame objections from realtors. The third reason is you're showing too many whiskers and not enough cheese. Too many whiskers, not enough cheese. What am I what do I mean by that? Well, it's a great metaphor for relationships in general, sales in general, and certainly attracting realtors in particular. You see, if you're trying to attract a mouse, you want to show them all cheese, no whiskers, because they know something attached to whiskers wants to eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What is that? A cat, right? So one of the reasons why you may be getting doors slammed in your face and having a hard time to overcome the high wall of uh, cynicism, resignation, and uh, you know resistance from these realtors is that you're showing too many whiskers and not enough cheese. Whiskers sounds like oh I've got a marketing program I've got a I've got a marketing campaign I've got you know a bunch of uh, Zillow leads I got uh, you know a bunch of leads off Facebook I've got this whiz bang gizmo gadget I've got this new cool tool and anything like that you're giving too much information. And when you give too much information, the realtor goes, I've already done that. I've done something like that. My company already offers that. My other LO already does that. And so they think of whatever it is you're offering and they say, oh, that is not going to work for me or I've already tried that. So if you give them too many whiskers, you give them too many reasons to say no, such that it's going to be very difficult to change their mind because they are already they already have references for what that was an, as an experience for them and they're going to have the gag reflex. Instead, you want to give them all cheese with no whiskers, little to no whiskers. What does cheese look like? Cheese looks like I'm looking for a top-notch realtor to send my buyers and sellers to. Okay, That is a very different experience and a very different overture versus I have a marketing program, a leads program. I got a cool gizmo or gadget that's going to help you do X, Y, and Z. And now all of a sudden they're thinking it's going to be more work. It's going to be more money. It's going to be more time. I already did that. My company already offers that. Too much whiskers repels. If you remove the whiskers and you give them all cheese, you start to attract. So you want to start to think about that and be cognizant of that. Is your current overture showing too many whiskers? Is it showing enough cheese? How could you add more cheese and less whiskers? Now you might be thinking, Dorn, I don't know how to provide buyers and sellers. If I knew how to do that, I'd do that. Well, that's exactly why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals hire us. 
at mortgagemarketingcoach.com because that is not an easy code to crack. You may have noticed. You can't just Google search it. You can't just watch a YouTube video or, or read a free blog or listen to a free podcast to figure that out. And that's why mortgage professionals hire us to give them the secret sauce on how to do that, how to generate more buyers, how to generate more sell sellers, how to self-generate, but also how to help the realtor generate more buyers from what they're already doing for right now, from their open houses, from their database, from their online uh, reputation, and uh, all the automation that should be in place that often is not in place. So the thing that you want to be keeping in mind is if you don't have that value proposition, if you don't know how to generate more buyers and sellers to your realtors, you're leaving a shit ton of money on the table because you will be left behind by competitors who do know how alumni of my program who do know how to add that unique value, who do not know how to become irreplaceable and indispensable such that the top producing realtors send them all their business all the time. If you don't have that know-how, you're going to be paying a hefty tuition to the university of not knowing, not knowing how to attract more realtors, not knowing how to attract the top dogs, not knowing how to generate more buyers and sellers, not knowing how to mine the gold from the database, not knowing how to help the realtors work smart versus just working hard, not knowing how to become irreplaceable and indispensable such that they send you all their business all the time. If you don't know how to do that stuff, you're going to be paying a hefty tuition to the university of not knowing. I can guarantee you it's going to be 10x, 100x the amount that it would be if you make a bold strategic investment in yourself to learn how to do that stuff, because that allows you now to have the unfair advantage in the marketplace. Like I said before, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. It doesn't take much to stand out from the pack. So the fourth reason, the fourth reason why so many LOs get stopped in the tracks when it comes to attracting realtors with uh, their lame ass smoke screens and objections is that they're making it too complicated. Perhaps you've been making it too complicated. Perhaps you're thinking you need to have a long ass, uh, you know, speech, or you need to have this, you know, long ass value proposition that takes you five minutes to, you know, go through line by line. Uh, maybe you're thinking that you need to really sell them on all the shit you offer before you even get to the appointment. If you're doing that, you're showing way too many whiskers, not enough cheese. You want to keep it simple. It's the, you know, the old adage, kiss. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, superstar. Keep it simple. So it's all about elegant simplicity, guys. We're all about elegant simplicity here on Planet Prosper at MortgageMarketingCoach.com. There's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way, for having the 20-step or the 100-step game plan to success. The least amount of steps with the most amount of elegant simplicity is always going to outperform the overcomplicated, the convoluted, the complex and the over sophisticated. You want to keep it as simple as possible. Now, obviously, if it was super easy to crack the code on this, it would only be one step or two steps. So there is, by virtue of necessity, a certain amount of sophistication and complexity required. Otherwise, anyone and their dog would be making half a million to a million a year plus without even you know skipping a beat. But obviously, that's not the case. There is a certain degree of sophistication and complexity built into the necessity to be uh, unique in the marketplace and to stand out from all your competitors. But you want to keep it as simple as possible. That's going to be key. Now, the fifth reason why loan officers tend to get stopped in their tracks by objections is that you lack proper training. You lack proper training. Even the training I'm giving on this free podcast, chances are you've not heard anywhere else. Chances are you're getting coaching from so-called coaches, mortgage coaches, who are getting to, you to call cold call 40 freaking realtors every Monday. That's doing it the hard way. That's caveman style from the dark ages. That's definitely doing it the hard way. Uh, and so proper training, unfortunately, you know, is uh, not uh, very prevalent. Unfortunately, proper training is hard to come by because chances are your manager, your coach, your mentor at your office or your company they started in the business 10, 15, 20, 30, 30 years ago. And the stuff that worked for them 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago just doesn't work anymore. It's not nearly as effective as it is now or as it was then. Today's marketplace is completely different. It's a different landscape. Rising rates, you know, hyper competition, margin compression, low, very low inventory in many places still, even though we're shifting more into a buyer's market. 
And in a post-pandemic environment, people aren't coming into the offices. It's hard to get a hold of people. People, even you know, real estate agents that really should be answering the phone, many of them are not answering the phone. So you're having to hit voicemail time and time again. How do you get past that high wall of reservation, cynicism, skepticism, resistance? It's not an easy code to crack. And unfortunately, we don't have proper training from our companies because they can't give that which they don't have. The stuff that worked for them to get their business off the ground doesn't work anymore. So we're working with old information and they're usually trailing edge and bleeding edge instead of cutting edge. So that's again, why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals hire us in mortgagemarketingcoach.com is to stay cutting edge or to get cutting edge versus bleeding edge, trailing edge. Because if you don't stay cutting edge, you're going to become irrelevant in a hurry. If you don't stay cutting edge, these realtors are not going to give you the time of day. And you know it, you've already tried it. If you don't stay cutting edge, you're going to waste a lot of time with fruitless toil, spinning your wheels, throwing yoga to the fan, holding something sticks. And that's frankly a very painful uh, struggle bus that a lot of loan officers stay stuck on. Many never get off that struggle bus, unfortunately, because they continue to tell themselves the lie that they can't afford training, that training's too expensive, that, you know, eventually if I just figure it out, you know, try and reinvent the wheel on my own, eventually I'll figure it out. Maybe I can go for a cheap method. Maybe I can go for a low cost method. Well, good ain't cheap and cheap ain't good. And this is certainly no exception. You want to make champion money. Obviously, it's not going to come from a chump level investment. And the higher you want to build the skyscraper of your dream, the deeper you need to dig that foundation. But if you're digging that hole with a gardening trowel, we got a freaking problem, right? That's doing it the hard way. There's something called an excavator. Way more fruitful, way more fun, way more fulfilling, and all, obviously way more fast when it comes to getting the job done in expedited fashion. So why take the 100-story staircase and bust your bun, sweating your bag off, doing it the hard way with a 50-pound backpack lugging up the staircase one step at a time, we can just press the P button on the elevator and go straight to making prosperity money, penthouse money, right? Again, there's no merit badges at the bank for doing it the hard way. So the people that we work with, the loan officers and mortgage professionals, mortgage brokers, mortgage bankers, mortgage originators we work with are the ones who realize and are intelligent enough to notice that it's going to be a whole lot more expensive to learn from their own mistakes, trying to reinvent the wheel, grinding up the 100-story staircase with a 50-pound backpack, doing it the hard way, versus going straight to what works right from the get-go and having a proven plan right from the get-go to be able to press the P button on the elevator and go straight to making prosperity money by having an expert in their corner with a proven plan. And that's why they hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com. So here's a big question. And this is perhaps the big question of the hour. What is the ultimate value proposition for attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive? If there was one value proposition that's like the ultimate cheese with no whiskers, what would that be? Well, you probably guessed by now. It's helping them attract not just buyers, but sellers, especially in a seller's market. But even in a buyer's market, listings is where the money is. That's where the money is. And that's when you see the people in the space that are making the most money, they focus primarily on listings, listings, listings. Now, you might be thinking, but Dorn, I don't want listing agents because listing agents don't have buyers. And that's where I'm going to call it tight and say, you're missing it, my friend. You're missing it. Because what's the ultimate bait to attract buyers? You may not have noticed, but hopefully you notice now. Listings. So listing agents have the ultimate bait to attract buyers. So once you learn how to crack the code on how to attract buyer agents and listing agents and to convert those listing agents into a lead attraction machine for your pipeline, for your funnel to feed you a steady stream of qualified pre-approved buyers by virtue of the buyers that are attracted to the listing agents listings, you have a license to print money, my friend. You have a license to print money. So you're not just in the mortgage business, you are in the marketing business. And in particular, you're in the business of helping top producing realtors attract more buyers and sellers. And the better you get at that, the more adept you become at that, the more prowess and mastery muscle you build at that, the more you're going to master your dream and the more you're going to be able to ascend to any level you want in income, freedom, autonomy, independence, making freedom money, doing what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want money, and to be able to do it with more fun, more flow, and more fulfillment. So you might be thinking, well, Doran, this sounds great, but you know, 
how do I do this from a practical standpoint? How do I connect the dots? I know that I need to have a kick-ass value proposition. I know that I need to you know, have the words that work that convert these objections into appointments. I know I need to have a system to be able to attract these realtors to get them hot for what I've got so that I'm not having to chase or beg or bribe or, gro- or grovel or kiss butts, but I can get them pre-cooked and pre-tenderized and hot for what I've got before I even talk to them. The question is, how do I do that, Dorn? Because I know if I have the keys to the Ferrari, it ain't going to be no thing like a chicken wang to overcome these objections, to show up in confidence and certainty, to be able to have the cookie so that I know that I know that I know that I am the best offer in town, period. And to show up with that kind of ironclad certainty. I know that if I can just get the keys to that Ferrari, Doran, I got it made in the shade question is, how do I get the keys to the Ferrari? Well, if that's you and you're on 100% commission, you eat what you kill with no safety net, making 85 basis points or higher as a residential uh, mortgage professional, and you're wanting to take your business to the next level, not just itty bitty incremental improvement, but you want to create an absolute breakthrough where you're making more money in one month than you used to make in three, four, five, six months while working the same or less hours. And you want to be able to do that and attract based method versus chasing best base method so that you hold the cookie. So you're able to maintain your dignity. So you're able to show up in power. So the realtor needs you more than you need them. How cool would that be? How's that for flipping the script, right? If that is you and you're really committed to thriving while everyone else is struggling just to be surviving, if, you, if that's you and you want to build a recession-proof business that's the least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most, and you want to be able to do that in the purchase market and build a dream team of top producing realtors who make you their exclusive, sending you all their business all the time, sending you one, two, three deals a month consistently, and to be able to do it only with cool cats who you love and adore and they love and adore you. You got synergy, you got chemistry, and you just got a great fit where you're building your dream team of not just partners, but friends, people that you can call true friends. And you're doing it in a way where you're bringing massive value such that you're able to tip the scales of fortune in your favor and enact the power of reciprocity where they literally would go into spontaneous convulsions at the mere thought of losing your partnership because you bring that kind of unique value. If that's you and you want to learn the secret sauce on how to attract these top producing realtors without the hell of cold calling or the suck of groveling or any of that nonsense, go ahead and book a complimentary breakthrough call where we're going to lift up the hood on your business and we're going to look at what's working, what's not working. Where are you at now? Where do you want to take your business? If we can help you bridge that gap, we'll show you what that looks like inside of our proven system at mortgagemarketingcoach.com. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass. Either way though, you will leave that meeting. You'll leave that call with massive massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Fair enough. So if indeed you feel like that's uh, the next step for you to explore your options, to get you armed and dangerous, so you're showing up to the gunfight with the freaking tanks instead of the butter knife like you have been, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, that's all we got for today, friends. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you from mortgagemarketingcoach.com at the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We just talked about how to overcome the big three objections. Now, the big three objections, of course, are I'm not interested. I'm not interested is the first one. The second one is call me back later. And the third one is uh, I already have a lender. All of those objections literally get obliterated when you've got a buyer or a seller and you're bringing the business to the realtor not the other way around. Notice how that just eliminates all the lame ass objections. Because when you're bringing buyers and sellers to the table, when you're interviewing them and you're vetting them as the partner on your dream team, that's the recipient of you helping them put more zeros and commas in their bank account and making their cash register ring with more zeros and commas, working smarter, not harder, and bringing them buyers and sellers, all those lame ass objections get obliterated, true or not true right? So that's how you overcome not just the top three objections, but pretty much any lame ass objection you get. But the top three are, I'm not interested, call me back later, or I already have a lender. And all of those get absolutely obliterated when you hold the cookie, when you're in the power position. So if you want to learn how to do that, 
working smarter, not harder. You want to pour gasoline on the fire in your business and you want to be able to build a rock solid recession proof business in the purchase market with a dream team of top producing realtors and own your market with the best realtors in town without the hell or the suck of cold calling or begging, ch chasing, bribing, or kissing butts, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. It's just going to be an honest conversation. We're going to have some real talk, connection, and we're going to shine the light of truth on your situation to see if we can help you. If we can, we'll show you what that looks like. If we can't, we won't. We'll recommend something else. Either way, you'll leave that call with massive value and massive clarity. Does that sound fair? All right, my friends, that's all we got for today. Again, this is Dornell Dana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.